I'm here with Miss Bonnie Patterson, who has been named the state, uh, well, I guess it's a district supervisor of the year of Middle Tennessee, but uh, she got, recently got uh, recognized in the, at the state level uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Bonnie, let's talk a little bit about um, your career as an educator here in Cannon County. Yeah, you grew up here in Cannon County pretty much all your life, didn't you? I did. I'm very proud from, to say that I'm from the Short Mountain community. Uh, my parents uh, and my two sisters, we were raised there and went to school at Short Mountain and uh, went through eighth grade and then went to Woodbury Central High. So I'm a Cannon County girl and I've been an educator here for, this is my 38th year, so still going strong. Well, while you went through schools, uh, I guess that's when you decided that you wanted to, to become a teacher. Actually and get not. No. Actually not. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I went through schools. I uh, played basketball and thought that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to coach. And then life happened, and when I got out of high school, I didn't go to college. I worked at a local factory here in town for about six months and worked with some really fine people but realized that's not what I wanted in life so I didn't know what to do and I just went down to MTSU and walked into the main building there and and thank goodness a lady saw me and realized I had a confused look on my face mm -hmm. and came up to me and said what can I do and I told her I want to go to school and she just took me in and helped me with the paperwork. And so I started school. And probably about the second semester, I realized I wanted to teach. That's what I, I wanted to help people. And so I, I felt like that's what I needed to do. I wanted to give back to my community because I had so many people give to me and, and be good to me. So that's what I've done. And you started your career in Cannon County Schools? Woodland. At Woodland. Uh, I will have to say that W.T. Todd was my first principal, gave me a chance. and In fact, that year he actually had four or five new teachers. And back in the day that was unheard of. You know, if you had a teaching job you kept it for life and there were very few openings. And Kenneth Melton was the board member from Short Mountain and I'll never forget that, that he um, called my mother and said, I will help her any way I can to get a job. And he did. And I had Mr. Todd as my first principal, and he taught me so much. And I, I will never forget that. Uh, he became a good friend. What uh, subjects did you teach at Woodland? Oh, I was a fourth grade teacher. Fourth grade, And okay. uh, it was self-contained. And I worked across the hall from um, Miss Joy Jones, who I don't know what I would have done without her mentorship, and uh, formed some lifelong friends there. Um, stayed there for four to five years, uh, maybe a little longer. Um, got to coach there, got to start coaching again, and or start my first coaching. Uh, experience and worked with Julie Powell and Reggie King and all those wonderful athletes there and they make you look good whether you're good or not yeah, <laughs> and yeah. so uh, Letitia Hutchins you know just some wonderful uh, individuals and families made again made lifelong friends there I decided that it was time to move elsewhere uh, after a few years and went to Woodbury Grammar to work under Joe Haltom, another wonderful man, um, and coached there for a while. And then I uh, found myself at Cannon County High School. Actually, I uh, was hired as head coach for a little bit of time, and then I had some health issues that came up and could not do it and realized that. And But then I was fortunate enough uh, that I worked under another good man, Robert Pitts, and um, they worked out a way that I could be assistant coach later, and so I, be, you know, got to work with high school girls again, and um, had worked with some through AAU, 
and and probably the high school was my passion that is I was happy everywhere but I was the happiest teaching physical science at County County High School for a long long time <laughs> and I uh, really enjoyed it um, again I mean it was just because of the people I worked with yeah and um, then uh, Kim Parsley became principal and she um, let me get a feel of what it would be to be an administrator and I became assistant principal there and then Miss Barbara Parker gave me a chance at being a principal and I always uh, will be grateful for that at Woodbury Grammar and yeah. I love that's my school I love Woodbury Grammar and but I, felt, I was at a point in my life where at the school that we had we had grown but I realized we needed to do so much more and I felt like coming to the position that I'm in now, I would be able to maybe make some changes so that school could get the help it needed. Right. And um, so that's what I've done here, and I hope I've done that. And I've uh, worked with families and um, still get to work with kids, get to work with teachers. So I got the best of both worlds. Yeah. I get to work across the district. In between Woodbury Grammar and you accepting your position here, you were always trying to innovate those type of programs that you're trying to implement now. Well, but, I mean, you know, you get to a point, uh, you do see what other people are doing and, it, and it's making a difference and you want to bring that to your community and to you. Our kids deserve the best. And um, I told someone the other day, I know what it's like to live um, in trauma, you know, we hear about ACEs and trauma-informed schools and uh, adverse childhood experiences. And every time I go to a training, I you have to take this little test so that uh, if you have had any of those experiences. And I said every time I go to those trainings, I, I shudder because I score so high on those uh, tests. Because I was that kid. I, I was a kid that had suffered some, you know, things through life in our family. We, you know, got through them. And, but if we had had the supports that we now see that can make a difference, maybe things would have been a little easier in school for me. And um, I was that kid that missed a lot of school. I was that truant kid at times, not because I was skipping school, but because of other things. And so I try to use some of those life experiences when I work with families. Um, I don't want the community to think that, you know, we're, you know, all about policy, policy, and, you know, we're going to haul you to court if your kid doesn't go to school because that's part of my job. Right. Uh, it, it's not that. We want to help families because usually if a child's not coming to school, there's an underlying condition. So I try to do that. I try to try to help them, try mm -hmm. to find ways to, to help the child. When you stepped into the school central office, you were had one position. Now you wear several hats, do you not? Actually, I had two. Two? Okay. <laughs> uh, well... Probably more than two, but anyway, officially I did, I, two. Officially two. It was attendance and coordinate school health. It right. has blossomed a right. little bit, but a lot of that's my own fault, I guess. Uh, just because, I mean, I I want to help people, and yeah. so I've been a principal, so it's easy, you know, to help principals, you know, if they have a question or a, a concern or a problem. If you've been in those shoes, then sometimes you might be able to give them a little bit of a, you know, bit of advice. And so I do that. I do school safety and um, homeschool. And I, I made a list, and it's kind of long. And I just think it all just kind of blends together. Works together. Yeah, it yeah. works together. We all help each other around here. It's yeah. community. We're, a, we're just a big community. As far as coordinated school health, you've introduced walking tracks. Mm-hmm. And playground yeah. equipment, gotten playground equipment grants yeah. and stuff to help kids, to, you know, be more healthier. Right. Because the difference between, I guess, when you and I were going to school and what it is now, there's a lot more obesity yes. going on in the school system or in, in, in life period mm -hmm. 
-hmm. than what it used to be in years ago, you know. Right. When we were in school, um, kids went home in the afternoon and you worked or played. I mean, you were outside. Right. Um, now we don't have as much of that, you know. First of all, there's a safety concern for parents of letting their kids just, you know, go out. Uh, another thing is that we have social media and video games and all those things. And so we are trying to create programs where, where kids learn healthy habits early. And so we do have walking tracks now at every school, and I'm very excited about that we I try to look for grants you know um, it's hard our community of course we know is stretched and uh, but we still need these things a healthy community is a happy community and so there's there's funding out there you just have to find it and look for it and and it takes a little bit of time uh, and the right people and you can get free money you really can and um, and we've been successful in doing that. And I think the last count that I looked at, we had, di for different reasons, it's not all just on physical activity, but uh, I think the count that I had looked at the other day, in the past probably eight years, over $600,000 in grants for equipment, um, physical um, environment improvements, safety improvements, uh, it's out there. You just have to look for it. And that's not counting the in-kind services as right. well. So we have lots of partners, lots of partners that come in. They help us with eyeglasses, the Lions Club. Um, we have the American Heart Associates, Association that we're working with this year. and. They're going to be able to help us with playground equipment and uh, things for physical education. We work with uh, the health department. Uh, our local health department is a wonderful partner. They mm -hmm. come in, they provide dental sealants for our children. Uh, any child can get those. And they're really pricey when you go to oh, the yeah. dentist. Yeah. Uh, so uh, hearing screenings, health screenings, I mean, we just partner with a lot of people and I'd hate to leave anyone out because there's just the list is long I keep a running list yeah. uh, of those people and I you know I want to give a shout out to everyone that comes to the table uh, so we have a lot of partners we really do and this is all coming together under the leadership of yourself well I don't want to say that I mean I, 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 I don't I mean I just try to get the right people Oh. around the table and again it's community I mean True. if you can all you know get together and and have one goal in mind you can do great things great things and so I've been fortunate that I've been able to find people that want to do that yeah. and there's you know our community is a wonderful community and um, so yeah I mean I just kind of get it started yeah at that's times, maybe <laughs> so <Maybe. laughs> I, I don't want to take the whole credit because there's too many people that that do the work another thing that you've been really instrumental in in creating and implementing per se maybe not creating but uh, it's been the school security the steps that you've beefed up the different schools in canning county to well, be more secure and, and that was just because it fell under my umbrella and the money is from the state but again, it's uh, been an effort. We try to get all stakeholders to um, put input. We don't want to make a decision without everyone at the table. So every year we have um, all the people that we can gather throughout the community that work in the safety uh, arena, whether it's EMA, 911, local fire and rescue, uh, principals we meet every year and we talk about concerns we do safety assessments every year and from those assessments that's where we decide to focus our money that we get so we have been very fortunate uh, I hope that money keeps coming I wish uh, the SRO grant that's out there we are not able to uh, utilize that because it's only a partial grant 
and hopefully they'll see the need to maybe change that because of rural areas like Cannon County who may be underfunded and not mm -hmm. be able to match that money. But uh, I'm hoping that that comes about. So the process of you receiving the Supervisor of the Year Award in Middle Tennessee uh, started off with a nomination <laughs> and a, a recognition by the Upper Cumberland, did it not? It did, uh, actually at the local level. Um, and I, I joked and said no one else filled out the application maybe, but I, I'm, I was very honored, uh, I will say that. After 38 years, you know, for someone saying, hey, you know, you, you've worked hard. It, it's really nice. And it's the nicest thing is all the people that's reached out and told me that, you know, thank you or congratulated me. I mean, so many people, so many former students. And, you know, we sometimes we fail to do that to people. We wait till maybe they're gone to say something nice. And so it was really nice that I had just so many people um, reach out to me and say kind words and so that that to me was the the biggest thing and, and I was surprised I'll, I'll just tell you I I filled out the application my husband was in the hospital and I had to have it in and I filled it out while I was staying up at night with him and, and I sent it in and I just forgot about it and uh, several months later, I, I come back to the office from doing something, and there's this congratulations email. So that was a nice surprise, and, and a very nice surprise uh, at the banquet. Very yeah. nice surprise. Take us through the banquet. What happened? Well, I mean, uh, lots of uh, all the finalists are there, and the principal of the year finalist. And, of course, you have to go through an interview, and uh, that was about a month before. And you can tell I, I don't mind talking, so right. I, I was okay with the talk, interview part. But uh, I always like to tell everybody about Cannon County, and um, so we had a banquet, and my children got to go with me, and I was excited that they were able to share that. And uh, anyway, so they uh, just recognize all the finalists, and then they select the three regions. Uh, and so when they did Middle Tennessee, I was pretty shocked because <laughs> there was some really, really good finalists that had done some amazing things. And so I, I was just, I'll be honest, I was shocked. And so it was a really nice night and Representative Clark Boyd came and that was very nice of him. To come and be a part of that and so and a lot of people a lot of my friends and colleagues showed up and again it was just really nice thanksgiving is coming up next week and of course we're going to put this in the thanksgiving issue as you reflect on uh, your career what are some of the things you're thankful for in the education field oh i'm thankful for uh where i get to work i'm thankful for the people that i have been able to work with and that took a chance on me, a little girl from Short Mountain, that who would have thought that, you know, she would have been able to have been a teacher and even go to college, to be honest. Um, so I'm very thankful for that. I'm thankful for the parents that let me uh, or have let me share their children a little bit uh, and that be a part of their lives and uh, just thankful that you know that we have that community small town community feel i just feel like that that's so important that we never lose that that we all um get along and work together to make this community the best it can be okay well congratulations and thank you for your time thank you keith